Welcome to the HBOT News Network. I'm Ed DiGirolamo, and it is a great pleasure to have another segment here with Dr. James Stevens. And uh, Dr. Stevens um, has a tremendous amount of experience in the world of functional medicine and, and is here to talk a little bit about, um, and, and for me to learn, um, as well as you, I hope, will learn from this, the, the way to optimize your health and longevity. And so Dr. Stevens has some really insightful information um, that he's come across in his career and has come here to share with us. So welcome, Dr. Stevens. Thank you, Ed. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you for being here. And so, so from the standpoint of just to define, you know, health and longevity, what do you mean by health? Well, I think uh, a, a, a two common phrases are health span and lifespan, right? So health span is how long right? Can I live before I disease? And we can name a list of diseases we're going to get to that, right? Lifespan is what's the quality of my life, right, for as long as possible without the detriment of those diseases, right? So health is health. Lifespan is I want to live as long as I can under certain principles, keeping my body as young and as healthy as possible, disease-free. Like quality of life. Great. You got Longevity it. would be like the quality of health. And, and, it, and, it, and everything's wrapped up in, in longevity, right? We now know that there are many, many people that w my patients come to me and say, I, I just don't want to be a vegetable in a nursing home, right? That's a very, very, very heavy concept, right? And it wouldn't exist unless it does exist. You couldn't make that statement unless that's already out there. And so the fact is, how do we wind up, right, really in a, in a bad state of health at a relatively young age, right? And that's a big focus of my practice. I will say, thank you for the introduction, that I am both a primary care doctor in a conventional self sense, but I've combined functional medicine, which is now deeply studied, evidence-based. We could talk about that for hours. And here's how I'd like to express it to the world, the world that says, is functional medicine real? If I told you that there were two universities in this country, long-standing, highly regarded, that have functional medicine master's programs, could you believe that the board of direction, directors right, of the university would ever allow right, a non-valid, a non-validated you know, study right, to, to come about? No. Right? So we don't need to talk about, show me the studies. Where are the studies? They're all there. Right? And we've had serious review of the science to the tune of two master's programs on the East Coast alone, right? So functional medicine can never exist without conventional medicine, right? And I'm gonna come back to that, and here's why. I like to say there's no functional medicine and there's only conventional medicine after five o'clock. A broken leg, right? Uh, my son, right, had a tremendous brain operation seven years ago for cancer. Right, at a major university with one of the world's famous neurosurgeons. There's no amount of functional medicine right, that's going to change that. So I feel very strongly about how we assess and how we deliver care in the form of there has to still be some conventional medicine. I don't live in a bubble of no obesity, of no diabetes, of no hypertension, of no high cholesterol, of no autoimmune disease. So health span is keeping disease away. Lifespan, as far as longevity is, how long can I enjoy premier health, right? And so I would say that's the entry point into a discussion on longevity in general. And hyperbaric oxygen, which we both admire and utilize, has its place in the context of longevity unequivocally. So when, it's, when it comes to the disease, the disease states that, that you're going to um, hold off, you know, recurring, um, 
Can you give some examples of certain diseases and, and what is the, the, what's the mechanism that hyperbaric oxygen um, changes or, sure. or holds back right. or fixes? Yeah. Can you give some examples of that? Well, yes. Uh, I, I think there's several ways to do it, maybe a metaphor or two, right, to help, right? If I'm swimming upstream, right, against a 20 mile an hour current, I have to apply so much effort. And I have a destination to go to, right? Think of salmon coming in the Columbia River, right? And at the end of that river, at the end of that road, it's all over, right? But do I want to swim against 20 mile an hour current or a five mile an hour current? The pressure on me in that metaphor is our lifestyle, is how we live our lives, right? We have to understand that all life at every level, well, at the cellular level, requires energy production. So I see hyperbarics as elegant and simplistic, right? Because to create energy, we require a nutrient and oxygen. That's it, right? What mucks all that up is everything else. Too much sugar, toxins, right? Heavy metals, autoimmunity, attacking ourselves in autoimmunity. And so if we can understand that hyperbaric oxygen as a mechanism, right, to improve cellular energy production, right, is how it works, then if we spend our time optimizing everything about the cell lifestyle and we apply oxygen, we have the best outcome in energy production. And energy production in your immune system predicts that your immune system functions well or better. Right? What's being written about a lot lately is what's called immunosenescence. Right? That our lives and the end of our lives are really predicted by the decline of our immune system. So what, what is a declining immune system after all? It's an immune system that slows down its reproductive rate. It slows down its ability to call to action. Why? It doesn't have the energy to do it, right? If we look at stem cells, right, the cells that are moved into an area of injury or moved through our bodies at times for regeneration, aging, right, without hyperbarics is a, a rate of decline in our ability to regenerate, right? We talk about vascular disease, right? The loss of our vascular supply to our tissue is something that everybody knows in the form of a heart attack, right? But do we have extensive understanding that, well, if I have a heart attack, or if I'm told that I have high blood pressure, I have a kidney problem, I have a liver problem, I have a brain problem, I have an everything problem, because every blood vessel is involved in that story. It's not just your heart vessel. So how do we optimize right, our lives to affect lifespan and health span? And I feel strongly that it starts and will end with our lifestyle, right? How we live our lives, what we choose to eat, you know, when we choose to eat. Remember we talked about fasting, right? Intermittent fasting, fasting mimicking diets strict water fasting, right, and all the benefits that fasting brings to the table. When we talk about calorie restriction, when we talk about the quality, when we talk about wholesome foods, and then we talk about exercise, we talk about spiritual development and life, we talk about how do we stay calm in the face of a world that seems to me to be awfully chaotic, right, at this point. We could spend hours talking about that. Right. But that's a stress, right? How do we handle that? Ultimately, it all comes down to how do I keep the cell in my body, all cells in my body, nourished appropriately and functioning appropriately. And I think that there's an elegant part to that story, right? You can't just go out and eat a Cinnabon every morning, right, and drink five cups of coffee and stress with your job and everything else. And go jump in a hyperbaric chamber and think you're going to change outcomes. You're not going to change health span and lifespan measurably. Perhaps you're going to help a little, but that shouldn't be what our focus is in this discussion.
Mm -hmm. I understand. And, and, and so I think one of the things that, that impresses me um, with the clinic that you're medical director over at Extavita is, is you, you get a patient that comes in there and they're suffering, um, uh, let's say they're a habitual smoker, they're a habitual drinker, you know, they, they, they have that disease, you know, alcoholism. And hyperbaric oxygen is a waste of their money if they Correct. think that's going to fix that. Right. And so, so you know, the encouragement that's provided with the clinic, you know, is, is impressive that um, work with the patients. I mean, get, they give them a, maybe an intravenous IV or something, get them started. Um, more about coaching them into, you know, kicking those habits. Yeah before they do the hyperbarics, and, the, and that will extend their lives and help right. that cellular repair. Sure. And, uh, and so, so from, the, from the standpoint of the, the description that you gave, which to me it's very visual, I'm a visual person, you describe it, I'm looking at this cell, it's got good food, it's, it's being worked, it's, um, it's circulating nicely through the body and doing its job, uh, it's, it's a stem cell you know, that knows its job and knows what it's replacing, what it's there to do. And, and, and it's, the oxygen is providing the energy to it. And then on the flip side, you have all this bad stuff, you know, the environment, stress. Right. You know, is it fair to say that even stress, um, chemicals, all of these things, they're all inflammatory in nature. Yes. That, that, so it prevents, the, even if you're eating good food, but you have all these other things going on, yeah. that, that's not going to, just like hyperbaric's not going to fix it. Right. You know, running marathon's not going to fix it. you got right. all this other bad stuff going right. on. So you, it's really the, the whole picture yes. there. So, so you got to get it all straight. Right. Right. And then you're going to maximize your, your, your life, your longevity, your health. 100%. I think that the message that I have for my patients and having an outlet such as this to reach a broader audience is coming to grips with what those cellular elements are and how to establish them. We know this, positive reinforcement works. Negative reinforcement sometimes works, right? Sometimes it doesn't, right? But positive reinforcement can be very, very subtle. And I'll give you an example, um, and, and it includes hyperbarics. It didn't start with hyperbarics, but it ends currently with hyperbarics. So I have a family, uh, a husband, a wife, and a child. And the husband comes to me for the third year, 390 pounds, five foot seven. Right? Uh, he's already had heart open heart surgery. He's got diabetes, hypertension, right? He's 51 years old. What's his health span and what's his lifespan? And so I say to him, you know, are we going to do anything about your lifestyle? Because we haven't changed any metrics and we're going down a pathway of just trying to keep you out of the OR or worse. Right. Well, we started uh, a peptide therapy, and today he's 164 pounds. Okay, but the the beauty of this story goes like this: his wife contacts me six months into his journey. He's already lost 80 pounds, and she's convinced that he has cancer. Why? Because we live in that mindset. He's losing weight. Yeah. We live in the mindset of everything's a disease and it has to be proven a non-disease. Not it's a non-disease and a disease will express itself. And so we talked and I said, no, he doesn't. His diabetes is gone. His blood pressure's from three to one. He looks great. He looks haggard. He's lost 80 pounds. And I convinced her that his metrics look great that he was moving his health span in the right direction. Well, by the time he gets to 80 pounds, this guy has adopted intermittent fasting, right? Organic foods. He only has, you know, cooked red meats once or twice a month at most, right? He's knocked out gluten. I mean, we could go on and on. She contacts me several weeks later and wants to know, could she do the same thing? Well, I said, of course you could. And she went from 175 pounds to 134 
couple weeks ago. She put herself in the trail, right, the tailwind of her husband, applied the diet, got into CrossFit, got into Spartan racing, right, finished first in her age category, right, right, sent me the picture and says, now I want hyperbaric oxygen, right, can I come and start getting in the chamber? It's was, like, was he doing that? Was he? He was not, right. Uh, and he was not simply because of our lifestyle and his. He's a high-powered attorney that works 12 hours a day, right? Finding the time. Find time, find time, find time, right? You're going to get it on the back end, though, aren't you? Yeah. So we'll see, right? Lastly, the son, 16, pediatric case, right? And off-label would be the treatment of this, right, in somebody under 18. But this is a rising senior who is 225 pounds following in his father's footsteps, right? Eating Cap'n Crunch for breakfast, right? Mm. On and on. But he was also psychologically really impaired in the sense of intimidated. I don't want to go to gym class. I'm not going to get changed in a locker room, right? Really sad. Well, he's now 175 pounds. He's lost 50 pounds. The whole family's lost 225 pounds. That's an awesome story, yeah. Yeah. He's feeling better about himself. He's got to be. Yes, he is. He's getting noticed, too. Yeah. And I'll finish the story. We may cut this out. But let me tell you the last. I FaceTime with them. I I mean, I uh, telemed with them, right? And he's in his room, you know, and his mother's behind him smiling and waving at me. And we're going through, you know, what do you tell me about your diet? Tell me about exercise, what he's doing. He's just beside himself, happy. And he goes, you know, there's one other question I have for you, doctor. And I said, what's that? And he goes, mom, you have to leave. And she goes, no, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Mom, please. She steps out of the room, closes the door, and he looks at me right in the camera and he goes, do you think I'll ever be a chick magnet? <laughs> we'll cut that out. Right? It was it was beautiful, right? Yeah. He's he's gone from defeated, right, to victory. I don't think that should be cut out. I think people need to hear that. Right. That's a great statement. Yeah. I mean, because you know, when you when you look at this, you know, this age group, right. you know, high school kids, oh. and you just go to the games and you look and you know you see that you see the athletes that are in good shape that yeah. are doing yeah. it. And then you see a lot of the spectators, and these right. kids can't be happy. I mean, yeah, you know. He I, was not happy. Yeah. He was really, he's a whole new person. And I have said to the staff in my office recently, I will finish 2022, and that's what I'm going to put on the wall is that family this year. That's why I get up and come to work. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and so <laughs> the wife wants hyperbarics, right, for sports performance as well as longevity, right? And she's found, but I started this with that positive reinforcement, right? And so her positive reinforcement is, it was so successful that what's the next thing I can do, right? And the next thing you can do is, right? And it's beautiful, yeah. hyperbaric oxygen will take you to another level. Absolutely, and so, and then doing the Spartan race, all of that is oh, wonderful. The yeah. fact that she did that, and uh, yeah, and, and so, well, that's a great story. Thank you. And, yeah. and, 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 uh, and, you know, it's just great work, I guess. I can see why that picture would be motivating. Yes. For anybody. Correct. Well, right. and so so one of the things that, um, that, that Ex Devita does is that longevity challenge. Yes. And, right. And so what's interesting, at least for me, is meeting people that, that just decide they're going to do it at a random time. Yeah. And, uh, and so... So that's the you know two week water fast you know the prolonged fast, and uh, and and it's you know amazing results. They don't always learn about the diet coming out, um, and for me uh, you know I would say that one of the best parts of a long term fast is you know twelve days or the twenty one day I lost thirty pounds yeah. was gaining a lot of not not all of it but half of it back yeah. that was fun. Yeah. 
And so you can eat whatever you want and you feel great. It doesn't yeah. matter because you lose so much weight. But, right. but I, would, I would really enjoy getting back down to like 185 and just staying there yeah. instead of hovering at 200. You right. know, just like yep. lose that 15 again. And so, so I'm going to do that longevity challenge, you know, in January at Extra Vita. And uh, I think it's going to be a good crew. There's a, a lot of. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited every year that you do it and uh, being it's, able to come over and yeah. have a few words with the gang and those people that are brave enough to step in to it. But I think if we can impress upon them, right, your health span is impacted by this. Now, 12 days in, in context of a lifetime, right, is like a million minus one. Yeah. Okay? It's infinitesimally small. But it's, it's, it's not that. It's looking for that positive reinforcement, 30-pound weight loss. And what does it really mean? Where my excitement is, is <clears throat> I tell my patients all the time. And an example was my conversation with the wife, which is I am the window that you can peer through to see a lifetime. Mm -hmm. right? I have delivered 150 children in my early years. I have sat at the last breath of a 94-year-old. Right? And the reality is, is my world is everything in between. Right? And so I, I really get a little bit agitated at times watching somebody go down this pathway, right? When you can grab that positive reinforcement, right? When you can improve the energy in every cell, in every way, and people can understand, I just have to maintain, right? I can circle back periodically. Maybe you come out of the, the longevity challenge, right? A 12-day fast, and you elect once a month to do 36 hours, right? Which is one technique that I personally like. And that is, I usually don't have breakfast. I'm a believer in intermittent fasting, right? And I eat a substantial lunch and usually a very small dinner. But when I choose for my fast, I'm gonna eat a modest lunch and a really big dinner. Uh, I'm gonna eat till I'm full, probably more than I should. But I'm not going to eat again until Sunday lunch. And I will drink ice water, you know, two cups of coffee because I don't like a coffee headache, right? But I'll drink ice water for the next 36 hours for two reasons, right? Cold, cold water reduces hunger, the message. And your body has to heat ice water so you burn calories just by drinking ice water. Oh, interesting. Yeah. About 100 calories a day, right? It's about a pound a month if you did it every single day. Your body has to heat up the ice Yes, water. it's a thermal, right? It, it, it's a basic thermal uh, a fuel, I mean, a process that requires metabolic energy to do. So now let's compare that to five days, water fast a yeah. month, yep. just Monday to Friday, Yeah. once a month. Excellent. Because, because by then you have that misfolded proteins that are... Yeah, you, you, you are. But I think if you did it every month for five days, this is Walter Longo's work. Is that what it is? Oh. PhD, Dr. Walter Longo. The longevity diet is specifically five days fasting, mimicking diet. Oh. And really what he's done is leveraged the benefits of fasting, the cellular benefits, right? The misfolded, right? The, the anti-inflammatory right, the improved cognition, right, the anti-aging, uh, the stimulation of stem cells, right, on and on and on that comes with fasting. And he's done it scientifically by designing, right, a few hundred calories per day. So I marvel because his work has been widely accepted, right? And many people still find that hard. But when you talk about five days, there's kind of a a very beneficial effect. I will do probably two, it's called the Prolon diet. I will probably do it two to four times a year. The Prolon, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a very specific. Yeah, yeah. It's comes a in diet a box. in a box. Yeah, diet in a box. Five days, right? Mm -hmm. You get six olives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get some kale crackers, a couple soups. But it's science, right? It's applied science. Mm -hmm. And it mimics the fasting state. Okay, so... I have this crazy diet, right? It, and it, I was introduced to it um, by by Dr. Cooey. Hmm. 
C O U E Y Q. He's a uh, he's a physiologist. Texas. Yes, physiologist, yeah. um, biochemist. Right. Thirty five years teaching at Baylor. Yeah. He consulted for NASA. Yeah. He's the blood guy. He looks at your blood. Right. Puts it under a microscope. So I, I had the, the I would say the pleasure and the honor of of meeting Dr. Cooey. Yeah. And uh, and and sitting you know with him for two hours. And he we looked at my blood, and and forty thousand you know magnification. Yeah. It's really interesting to see your red yeah. blood cells and viruses and bacteria. Which I was like, oh, is that bad? And he's like, no, no, no. You, it's like exercise. Your body needs virus. Yeah, it yeah. needs to be in there. Right. And, and all this stuff. And so, so in his um, synopsis, he, he, he explains the importance of enzymes. Yeah. And enzymes are, you know, the most important thing our cells need. Yeah. They need enzymes. And, and of the 70 enzymes, I guess, that, that have been identified, it's a number like that. Um, you get them all in cruciferous vegetables, but you can't cook them past 165 degrees or you kill them. So raw cruciferous vegetables. So those grow in the winter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So naturally they'd be around year year round. So that would be a yeah. You know, sort of fit. You know, the right. God given the ability to survive. Right. They're very low in calories. Yeah. So that you know mimics maybe. That. Absolutely. And then and then secondly was the amino acids and mm -hmm. that they were in egg whites. So you get your amino acids in egg whites again. Very low calories, not a lot. So so. Cruciferous vegetables, egg whites, and then the vitamins and minerals we take, as he explained, they're helpers. They're not the most important they're thing. They're cofactors. Yeah. And, and one of the most interesting things that he said is that you mentioned earlier was the positive attitude. Is that, that in his research, and Cooey has, it, I think, 30-some-odd publications, um, books that, yeah. he, that he's published, um, was, was his, um, his conclusions about prayer. Mm. And and that people that pray, their cells open up and absorb mm. all of these great nutrients mm -hmm. much more readily than someone who is, um, you know, agnostic or an atheist, and, and actually saw that physically saw that and had proof for that and did some studies with his PhD students where he had roundtables. Wow. And and in fact, um, you know, he proves the existence of God through science as one of his lectures. And in fact, in these roundtables that there were students that were praying and, and their cells were opening and absorbing all these great nutrients, where there was an agnostic or an atheist at the table, not praying, who was closed. The mm. cells were closed, not absorbing mm. the, the great nutrients that, mm. that, that, that were introduced into their bloodstream. And he took the, the, the Christians that were there praying to pray for the atheist. And, the, and they did that, and the atheist cells opened up. Mm. So he said that had to be repeated because they kind of freaked out. And, you know, need uh -huh. to see that sure. again. Sure. And so, so to the point of positive nature, praying was the most open that he saw the cells sure. operate. So what an interesting meeting, meet, meeting someone that had spent his life looking at that. Yeah. yeah, very fascinated, you know, about how, you know, evolution you know, talks about, you know, Darwin theory. Well, you know, monks and apes, they're still here. Yeah. You know, um, that, that doesn't really hold water. And, and the human DNA, there's no, there's a huge gap, you know, between us and anything else that ever existed that they can see it. And so, anyhow, it's really interesting, his, his deep sure. faith, you know, in, yeah, in wow. God. And so, ending on that, anyhow, yeah. Dr. Cooey. Um, so is there, if there is a miracle, you know, as we've ended the other three sure. segments yeah. that, that, that you would like, and, 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 and in this case, I would like maybe you could say the prayer instead of me <laughs> dominating the prayer. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think my response to be the miracle is really consistent with our last three um, talks together, right? It is that people, all of us would come to understand right, that we can be ignorant about our diet. We can be ignorant about exercise. We can have all the excuses in the world. But it's not 
I want something. It's what do we need, and are we willing to reward ourselves only with what we need versus what we want? And that's a, that's a very broad concept. But when we embrace it and then are willing to understand, right, that if I do this, I'm going to pay a penalty, especially when I do it every day or once a week, right, or whatever, right? We have to understand that the knowledge, the science is all there to tell us what is healthy and what is not. And so my prayer would be, right, that people come to it be enlightened in the sense of committing you could probably walk to anybody in the grocery store that's leaving with a giant carrot cake and say do you think that's the healthiest thing to eat and they would say you know probably not probably not right well that's true so okay if that's a special occasion maybe but the point is we repeat that explanation to ourselves over and over and over, right? And we tend to overnourish ourselves calorically. We tend to not think about fasting or intermittent fasting, right? So I think my prayer would be that people came to embrace, but to commit, right, to the understanding that I control my own fate. I control my health span. And I control my lifespan. And I think you make a really good point that I can control it, right? And I think if I have a spiritual orientation and a believer, right, in a higher good and a higher creator, that that level of hope, right, is transformative, right? And and it, it helps me in my life, right? I think it's something that... Uh, and, and, and this is not a discussion, right, about religiosity. This is really, what are the elements? Well, the elements start with, am I willing to commit to, understand and commit to a lifestyle that benefits my health span and benefits my lifespan? One of the things that, that, that I find that makes that easier for me is that I'm not doing it alone. Sure. And that's, and that's where my faith comes in. Sure. Because whenever I feel weak yeah. in, in, in any decision that I'm going to make, I just look over and I, I ask Jesus Christ, what should I do? Yeah. You know, just don't, don't feel you're alone in this, you know, this battle together. That's my personal strategy. He's my Lord and Savior. Sure. But, but if you feel like you're in it alone and it just doesn't matter, I think that's, that's where it falls apart. Right. And so, uh, yeah. so I share that prayer with you. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Dr. Thank Stevens. Thank you for and, having uh, me. Yeah, and, and uh, we'll have to find some compelling um, um, discussion points and things that you can come back. And we are going to, um, and, and, and I think it's important, um, we'll, we'll put something at the bottom of every segment. So if you're watching this and you want to reach Dr. Stevens and know all your practices, what sure. you're doing, okay. um, we're going to put those links so Thank people you. can contact your Very well. your your medical um uh, what, what conglomerate? <laughs> you have a number of offices, right? So where are you located? You, you're uh, Salt Lake City, Aspen, North Raleigh, Cary. We hopefully will be in Bozeman, Montana in the next four months. Uh, and then from there, we'll be down in Charleston, South Carolina, I believe. So we might wrap up 23 with uh, at least those two locations. Yeah, congratulations. Thank it's you excellent. very much. It's great medicine to get to the public. And, yeah, thank you. And hopefully you can point this this, this series to your patients. Yeah, well, so, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I think they get something out of yeah. all of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, well, hey, thanks for Yeah, thanks thank for you for having me. Yeah, okay. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you.